Welcome to Trauma Research Foundation's TRF Tuesday. This is our weekly mini workshop series from Bright Voices in Therapeutic Embodiment. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. It's the best way to let YouTube know that this content is valuable and to show it to more people. Welcome, Gong. Take it away. My name is Gang, and I am right now in the Philippines. It's four in the morning. We shall start immediately. I don't want to keep you waiting. You know, this is so funny because when I told my, my friend what the title of the uh, session was today, is today, and that it was Romantic Errors, he said, but everyone's such an expert in that. <laughs> so if you have any, if you've had Romantic Errors, please type an exclamation point on the chat box and Tell me I'm not alone. I'm just kidding. Ah, Aisha. Hey, Stephanie, just you're supposed to only type one each. Just kidding. Ah, Miranda, let me hug you <laughs> with consent. Okay, good, good, good. So as you can see, I'm famous in my, the university where I used to teach that it's a Jesuit university. I'm not very religious, but it happens to be the university here. Um, I'm very famous for having titles for lectures, and I discuss something completely different. <laughs> so if I, let's blame my ADHD. So if I veer away a bit from the topic, let's blame the time <laughs> difference. But all of you are experts in romantic errors, and you probably have seen the Tinder Swindler documentary. You've probably heard of Sleeping with the Enemy Maybe you've browsed about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. I decided not to discuss Gone, Gone Girl tonight, I hope uh, tomorrow, this morning, mainly because it might trigger some uh, unpleasant stuff. But, and also because I had to limit the time so I could get a Q&A period in the end. So I just thought I'd give you that. So let's start with the Tinder Swinders. My main goal is to always discuss something on Tuesdays with you that you can't you can't google because it's too easy to it's too easy to get information these days so we will do the synthesis of things and so you've probably seen him I, I forget his name I think it's Simon but it's really a master class in in uh, love bombing which you've probably heard of if you studied narcissism or even if you've encountered it hopefully not so much so the four points I want to do to hold on for you to hold on to the next time you encounter any news bit about the Tinder Swindler and anything remotely uh, resembling this is that it's really an instructional video of how they how lovers bomb people at the start and then use it to manipulate and win over. It's the predator prey relationship. Sometimes I may be super honest. Sometimes we're the predators. So this is really an interesting um, dynamic if you're studying it. But it's all right. All right, hang in there. I also need us to know that while I was watching the Tinder Swindler, everything else was just so easy to understand. Like, oh, okay, he wants to pretend he's, he's rich. Oh, okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, beautiful girls, yeah. And girls, the in this case, it's a heterosexual relationship. So it's the females that would dream of being comfortable, secure, and loved by someone who has a lot of resources, et cetera, et cetera. I'm trying very hard to stick with politically correct language here. So that's why I'm stalling. But I realized the main origin story for me that I picked up, and I really want you to put these lenses on when, the next time you encounter something like this, is I really think it's because the, the blue bar, can you see it? The truth is unbearable. I think for Simon... Hayut, which is the, his real name, and he picked up Levayev, which is the last name of a diamond billionaire. Are you aware of this? Okay. He it's all it's such an intense study in self-loathing. And it's really, really sad, actually. At the bottom of all this, you, you realize it's sad. Again, I don't encourage us to study pop culture and, and see mental health learning with it to give the errant uh, actors an acquittal. Is that correct? It's not an excuse. It's just to explain. Uh, we're not excusing, we're explaining. Maybe it's easier to dance around that and avoid it down the road. I also think 
um, eventually it was also a lesson in acquainting ourselves with consequences. It's too easy, everyone. It's too easy to just look at it as a, oh, he's a jerk who made girls fall in love with him and he got money. I don't think it's that simple. It can be on, on one angle. But since we are trauma-informed and we are aggressively, I suppose, and fiercely, I hope, students of mental health learning, and you know mental health, the science of mental health is rarely exact. It keeps shifting. So I really like it when we watch. And while we're watching docus like these, e even if it's just like a five-minute or on YouTube, put on lenses. Um, or maybe the maybe in the end the goal is compassion. Maybe in the end the end the goal is justice. But I really want you to go and dive deep whenever you watch these encounters. So if you have anything to, to add, please just use the chat box or raise your hand or questions. But I'll like swiftly go through this. I will not waste minutes explaining what you've already read. So I will just synthesize stuff over it so that you have other views for it. We've heard of them, beautiful couple. And these are the angles I want us to restudy. I always emphasize this in, on TRF Tuesdays that the learning, the great big shift in learning is not in this hour, not so much. It will be what's planted in your brain. And in the next three weeks, as you scroll, you'll say, oh, I want to see this in a different way. <clears throat> so these are the four parts I wanted to touch on regarding the Amber Heard case and the Johnny Depp case. I really want us to re-explore what celebrity is, if you see the purple box. Is that purple? Yeah, I guess. The brighter purple above. Um, the origin of celebrity, the word, it really comes from someone who is celebrated. <laughs> and when they're celebrated, back in the early days of Hollywood, I suppose, or even vaudeville, or even earlier than that, it's that you're, there's something we celebrate about them, so they're either exceptional singers or they dance really well or they're let's say in sports they Michael Jordan is a basketball player and then you have the Kobe's may he rest in peace and Steph Curry's etc and then if you are of that era I'm a I'm a Boston fan so I grew up as a child watching Larry Bird's two facial expressions I'm just kidding and so we celebrated them because they were they had something they had merit. They were doing something excellent that's above. Or they're actually more good looking than the rest of the percentage of the world, I suppose. There's something to celebrate. But these days, and then they became famous because there's something to celebrate about them. These, so what we did was, as a generation, we associated being famous or popular or known, whichever is more comfortable. I think those three words vary in degrees. We associate being famous to being celebrated and celebrated is something because there's merit, like we're excellent at something. But these days you can actually be famous just to be famous. I'm sure you heard of the, the phrase describing Kim Kardashian where she, or was it Paris Hilton? She's famous for being famous. Uh, and then those things change. And then let's look at the, I don't know what your average age is, but I'm 51. And so I really grew up watching Michael Jackson and I grew up watching Shoot, but what, the groundbreaking thing for me was the making of Thriller, the video. Please be with me here. Come on, <laughs> indicate if you've seen it. Like type an exclamation point if you've seen the Michael Jackson, um, the making Thriller where they showed all the effects of the werewolf, et cetera, et cetera. So this MTV effect, this music video effect, it has such a big, big effect. Terrifying, great work. Exactly. And Stephanie, it was also the first time we had... Um, over an hour worth of seeing what was behind the scenes of a music video in 1981, August 30, August, where they started the first MTV. It's really Gen X, woo, Gen X. It's really music videos that were narrative. So you could see that it starts somewhere and there's like a semi um, narrative plot. And then eventually it became a little more avant, and then it's just images, and then they're they're not so chronological already. But the Michael Jackson thriller making video, making of the video, that's really groundbreaking for many of us because we saw how he was, how the makeup was done, how the whiskers when he was becoming a werewolf was coming out, and etc. And a lot of the older school producers were so. Um, I know this because my uncle is in the film business. 
uh, were very wary of showing behind the scenes because they imagined or foresaw that it will suspend your disbelief. So like if you know how the computer graphics of the when the first Jurassic Park came out, when you knew about it, they think that you won't be able to suspend your disbelief because you kind of know. But it actually depends on your frame of mind. But it's still, this is the reason why it changed. Because the, the backstage disappeared. Prior to this, we only encountered celebrities on stage, um, figurative or literal. They were just on stage. We never really saw them brushing their teeth or waking up in the morning. But you see, with the advent of all the uh, what do you call it? gossip magazines, um, showbiz magazines, you know what I'm talking about. All of a sudden, we're interested in where they have coffee, what they look like without makeup, uh, <laughs> uh, what kind of coffee do they drink, them in slippers, Bono brushing his teeth. And we found it so thrilling because it gave us a peek behind the curtain of them on stage but um, a lot of things uh changed since then a lot of change a lot of things changed why because now let me go back to johnny and amber because they are the title of the slide um we almost felt like it was our business what they were going through now and now i'm stating the obvious ob but we need to go back to that it wasn't always this way and you need to think about this. Like, how did this happen? How did all of a sudden the entire world thinks it's their business to know if they're unhappy or happy with whoever they're with? Does it make sense? But now it's a given. If someone breaks up, you we just know it. It's our business. We ask. So that's something to think of. Um, if you if you <laughs> if you cared or know, I was thinking, wow, I don't think I have much input input about this, but I realized, no, I do, I do. My input is, guess what? There are so much more questions there that we're not asking. I don't think TRF Tuesdays is to give answers. I think TRF Tuesdays is to re-examine other questions. Maybe we're not asking the right questions. So for me, it's really like, wow, where did it start? And that it just is, you know, this is how we are. And I don't think we can go back to to the attitude of Hollywood where it was just a celebrated thing. We kind of have to deal with rather common, <laughs> rather dull people becoming famous. But, you know, back then it wasn't always this way. So that's one good thing to point to ponder on this week. Sleeping with the enemy. If you haven't seen it, it's really about a couple that um, <laughs> the, the, the husband obviously is... Um, as OCD and a, nar a narcissistic behavior. So he was very controlling and et cetera. So let's, if you haven't seen it, just figure it out this week or I'll just give you an overview. This is really a one-on-one -on -one video on trauma. It's really an instructional film on what trauma is because the character of Julia Roberts ran away from her OCD, uh, oh, narcissistic obsessive husband, her narcissistic obsessive husband. And she tried to start off a new life, cut her hair, et cetera, et cetera. And there was one scene where at the start where the towels in their home, let me give you an, an idea what it looked like. So the towels in their home was like this and the husband saw it and he fixed it and, and aligned all the towels and physically hurt Julia Roberts. Um, I apologize if you're triggered. Uh, we're just in a discussion. <sighs> Exhale if you heard me and you're getting nervous, but come back with me. And the interesting part is when the camera panned to her new home where she was already in hiding and she saw that her canned goods were in order and her towels were in order, the whole theater went, he's there because somebody fixed um, all the labels of his, or canned goods in the pantry facing forward. And I think it's a fascinating thing about film and pop culture it actually can spell out what trauma can be, which is it's not always overt. It's not his face growling. It's not a monster. They're just towels. But if you are traumatized, it's not just a towel. It reminded her of a controlling, abusive husband that, yes, it's exactly. And so, that's that's a that's a one on one. I'm sure many of you, especially those who finished the courses, that this is so elementary for you. But I think I wanted to give an overview of how you can actually synthesize very many things with your trauma theories. I dive deep into academic research a lot. I get lost in it. Research is my life, but I always I 
I forced myself to create this experimental series and you ought to do this too because our challenge as trauma-informed collectives, which is us, is to really simplify and translate it to those who are still foggy about it or uncomfortable. Does this make sense? Okay. Now, we're going to take a somatic break. Are you ready? you have any questions so far? No? None? Yes? No? <laughs> it's okay. I will... 420. Okay, we're going to take a um, super, super interesting break. Okay. What do you, sorry about that. Just a second. I'm showing a picture and in the chat box, kindly tell me how you feel about, um, sorry, about this picture. How does this picture make you feel? How does the picture make you feel? Too narrow, panic. Okay, claustrophobic. Jacqueline says anxious. Heather says constricting. Okay. Now inhale. And then exhale loudly. Then I'm going to add something to this. I'm going to add something to this visual exercise. I'm going to put music. Hold on. Well, let's keep looking at the picture. How do you feel about the picture now? How do you feel about the alley now? Romantic adventure. That Samantha, cozy, sleepy, dreamy place. Oop. Better. <laughs> okay. Can you see how when you add another layer of sense, sense of hearing, upon seeing something, something happens. You add some disinterested. I like that. I prefer, still, still don't like it, but I like the song. That's cool too. That's cool too. But since there's a new layer to it, there's a new lens to it. I don't, I'm not going for the dramatic change in attitude towards the alley. I just need you to feel that, okay, there's something different now. Now, how does the alley feel now? It's more narrow. Oh, okay. More into the picture. Into it. That's so interesting. Something bad about to happen next. And weirdly exciting. Okay, Heather, let's discuss that later. Uh -uh. <laughs> okay, can you see how, let me turn it off first for now. Let's, see. Let's, get, let's go back to the calming music so that we're not so stuck with Carmina Burana. Um, when we look at a view, when we're looking at the same thing, many of us react differently. Some say, oh, I like this alley. Then usually, and again, a one-on-one on trauma, if your first kiss was in an alley with a really nice boy or girl, and this is such a, oh, it's an alley. But if you've ever lost a wallet in a dark alley somewhere, then this is like Batman's Gotham alley when he was 11 or 10 years old. And it's different. So I'm about to find something. It's the music. Yes, yes, yes. So in relationships, in watching pop culture and watching things, sometimes two of you or three of you are looking at the same situation and you're really reading it differently. And sometimes you're in one alley and you add to it with cognitive dissonance. I'm sure you've heard of that. If you haven't, you need to Google it tonight. Cognitive dissonance. When you add so much layers to something you're staring at, it's really just minus everything, minus the music. It's really an alley. And you will fit, and the, the walls are not closing in. But if you add it with cotton, not moving right, people are going to 
Bali. Mm. I'll end with this again. Let's do this again so you're not annoyed. So, how does your brain feel? How does your brain feel? This exercise, some rusty parts fell. Um, and that is the end of our somatic better now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. So let's go back to our somatic break. That was a somatic break. I told you you're all experts in romantic error, so I don't need to le lecture or give an input on anything. But I, if you see how things are going, when we're scrolling and we encounter all these stories, we really have layers of us in it. And, and, and surprisingly, it's how many of you, if when you're reading something like Amber Heard or Johnny Depp, you immediately choose a team. You immediately choose a team and say, oh, I'm team Johnny or oh, no, 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 I'm team Amber, etc. And how many of you like exert a lot of effort to go, no, I think I want to read all sides, etc., etc. It's amazing how we think they are our business, but we do that. I can't stop us from scrolling. I find it really interesting, but I really want us to know that there these minutes, maybe hours of you scrolling on the internet and encountering news bits that are outrageous sometimes, or because they rarely put it in the news if it's not as outrageous or et cetera, you can actually... Instead of feeling like you wasted time, you can put on your lenses and say, oh, I, maybe Johnny Depp wasn't so loved. Oh, there is a back story to Will Smith's slap on Chris Rock. And oh, I think A, B, C, D, F, G. So we get to convert all our doom scrolling, which is um, for many uh, a useless use of our minutes, into learning minutes, teaching minutes. Like, hmm, I wonder what which condition led to this. I wonder what the origin story of, of Julia Roberts is. I wonder what the origin story of Amber Heard is. Maybe she's had a difficult... So it's really great. It's good exercise for your brain. Please remember, it's really exercise. It's really practice. You need to... We need to... I need to... Do the sit-ups and the push-ups and et cetera before we play the sport. And what is the sport? Our mental health is actually the whole sport. And a lot of times, you need to, we need to stretch our brains with push-ups and, and sit-ups and et cetera. And sometimes we can do this while we're doom scrolling when we view it with a different lens. Yeah, the end of input. Who wants, who has a question? Pat, join me here. Hello. Let's take a look. 428. If anybody has any questions, drop them in the chat. I have one question. So we've got a lot of examples today of, of bad behavior and things like that. What are some examples maybe of like good, like a good model that you would think? <laughs> we are all in search of the good model. Um, you know, there. It's really interesting. I find it terribly interesting that human Homo sapiens always put a premium to longevity. Like when they say, "Oh, Michael J. Fox and so and so, they've been married for thirty years now." You know, blah blah blah. Or uh, who was the famous Paul Newman and Joan Woodward? And is that right? Did I get her name right? The A B C D E F G. And they say. Oh, Elizabeth Taylor got married 11 times and et cetera, twice to the same guy and et cetera. And then immediately we put a premium to the length of time. And then there's an argument that comes up and like, you know, of course not. Just because they're married 100 years doesn't mean ABC, it's a great marriage, et cetera, et cetera, right? And some say, oh, but that didn't last, blah, blah, blah. So it's really up to us with, with what we pr put premium on. Do I put value in longevity of things that stay on um actually yes i do um do you do, this is the reason why when you see a, a starbucks cup it says established 1971 you know <laughs> and m&ms you know as you know etc or even budweiser or the beers it always says as since 1898 brewing since etc etc um there's a reason there's a reason why they put that uh because it survived through the years. And if you ask me, there are very many ways to go about this, but when it comes to good behavior or which one is valuable and which one is precious and which one we ought to aim for, many times we decide, do we want the momentary romantic soulmate fiery thing that's eight months 
or what many people will say boring and routinous and ordinary, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but it lasts, etc. Uh, you all know what the answer to that is. Actually, you can have both. <laughs> so do your fling while you're young, and then you know. I'm just kidding. I'm thinking. It really depends on your constitution, which one is good example or which one isn't. Because a lot of people can argue and say, you may keep your years. I have my moments with my soulmate, blah, 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 if that's what's important to you. I'm trying very hard not to be judgmental here. But good, good here in the chat, too. Maybe I don't know if we have time for it, but someone mentioned the origin stories from last week. Did anyone email you with those that we could... Stephanie really? did. You did. I, I, um, I only got one and the others. I'm not sure. Maybe they're in our inbox. I apologize. I didn't check it. Are you okay if I start with origin stories that were submitted next Tuesday because we're discussing sure, family? Sure, sure. We're I would, I would family. Um, say let's let's leave out name specifics. Anything specific if we're going to read it on the air, but we'll. Yes. We yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. It's uh, Mary, did you learn anything today? <laughs> I really loved the somatic exercise looking down the narrow um, hallway, I'm calling it the narrow, the narrow alley. alley. It was really amazing how, how different it felt going from nothing, no music to the serene music. The serene music changed it so much for me. And then, of course, we went to the other music that was kind of ominous and threatening, and it changed it again. But for me, the biggest change was from no music to the serene music. It really gave me a whole different perspective on how to feel, on what to feel. Sometimes yeah. we forget. We forget that we have five senses. Um, when you're looking at something or facing a... It, something that's challenging, like in the next 10 minutes, you need to pre present something or you're going to have a difficult conversation with a loved one. It's always more difficult than a thesis defense. Uh, we forget that you can actually get a uh, freshly baked bread and smell it. You know, if you forget the other senses, we forget when we were children, we knew this. When we were nervous, you hold on to something furry, you know, your stuffed toy, a blanket. We like blankets with texture, etc. That's soothing. That's automatic. No, nobody taught you that. You knew that by instinct as a mammal. I'm nervous. Hold, you know, you hold something. Or, um, but I think as adults, we can optimize it. This is why I think there's such a boom in essential oils. Uh, please study it carefully, whatever. Ugh, you're smart. You can do that. But I used to watch some of the ads and they say, I feel so much more in control now. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? But I realized we never control what we smell. Rarely. If there's a, if there's a trash truck that passes by, you, you're gonna, you have no choice. You're just going to smell the trash, right? If somebody uh, with less than uh, ideal hygiene is beside you in the train, you have no choice. The, you know, the scent is just going to sit on your lap. That's just how it is. There's no no slids. But but if you have tiny bottles and you say, I want to smell eucalyptus open. Oh, I get it now. Oh, I want to smell mint, etc. You can. We do this every day in a very faint way. We choose which shampoo we buy you know you don't like the scent of watermelon uh, those fake cucumber melon scents if you don't like i don't like that if you like it you know you're anyway i don't like apple scents not so much i gear towards the citrus because generally in kingdom animalia mammals really um react to citrus scents in an up way now, unless it's a, tied to a terribly traumatic event, generally, statistically, the high percentage is it will up your mood when you smell something citrusy, lemon, lime, bergamot, Japanese, um, what's that? What's that word anyway? Otsuma, satsuma, um, whatever it is that you have. Um, and then generally the sap scents like frankincense, oud, they're calming and warm and et cetera. Do you, do you, that's not bullshit. Guy. Sorry, is it okay to say that? That's not BS. That's ancient. That's mammalian. <laughs> it's really in us. So why, am, why did I go that way? You, we forget that we have senses. We need to make our senses help us when we are in a difficult, tight spot where we're not breathing well. So what are your senses? 
um, uh, your sense of taste. Get um, sour candy always works because you salivate with it. Um, touch something furry or smooth or soft or smell something. Really inhale your coffee. You rarely do that. I know because it looks so cheesy and cliche and so like Instagram hipster where you're smelling your coffee like it's so fake. No, 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 no. Really smell it. No one's watching you anyway. Really smell it. You forget. You forget your senses and your senses can calm you down. As proven by looking at a narrow alley and I gave you something else to hear. Another le sense layer came above it and then all of a sudden the alley wasn't so menacing. But sometimes we work and, and exaggerate it and add more anxious things to it by adding the ominous opera music or Fortuna from Cam Carmina Burana. When I played it, you're like, okay, that really made the alley, which was earlier just narrow, now narrow and scary, right? Or et cetera. Obviously, it's just a metaphor and these are just really simplistic, but I think these are things you can think of this week. And when we meet next Tuesday, we will start with origin stories. If some of you can submit or, and then we'll proceed with the family discussion on family roles. And it's an introduction to family systems. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you again for coming in and signing up. Uh, thanks, Gang. Thanks to our audience for joining us. And Gang, we love having you on TRF Tuesday, <laughs> another fun session. We've loved having you today. We can't wait to see you next week with more fun for more fun with Gang Kapadi. Until then, be well.